Maybe flying frog isn't the best way to describe these amphibians, as they can't really fly. A better name might be gliding frog, or even parachuting frogs. Eh, flying frogs has a nice ring to it though. There are lots of different frog species that have developed to have more thoroughly webbed feet, thus giving them the ability to catch the wind between their toes. Though their classification is debated, today we'll specifically be looking at the frogs most commonly referred to as THE flying frogs. Aren't they amazing? Flying frogs are found throughout the forests of Asia, and there are about 80 recognized living species. Some species depend on primary forests, or forests that have largely been untouched by humans. Others are a bit more adaptable and can tolerate, or even prefer, secondary forests, which are forests that have regrown after disturbance by humans. Flying frogs may also be found anywhere from sea level to more than one and a quarter miles above sea level, with some species only appearing in forests at least half a mile upwards. Perhaps not needing mention, within these forests, flying frogs are typically found living within the trees at any level from canopy, or the top of the trees, to the understory, the plants and tree bits that aren't quite the ground but are nearly there. Flying frogs usually don't leave the trees without purpose. However, after heavy rains, they may descend and go looking for love. The mating habits of flying frogs are generally under study, but they seem to have a preference for breeding right after the rainy season. This is likely because during this time, ephemeral pools become available as perfect places over which to hang their nests. Yeah, even as babies, these frogs fly. Female flying frogs construct their nests over pools of water, either on overhanging leaves or rocks. The nests are foamy, and she'll deposit the eggs within, at which point her selected male will fertilize them. The female will then give the nest some hugs before leaving her babies forever. After about a week, the tadpoles will hatch and drop from their nest into the water below. They'll spend a month or two developing, eating detritus that includes their own siblings that didn't make the fall. When they become adults, flying frogs mostly feed on insects, though there is a superstition in some areas those frogs inhabit. The superstition goes that the flying frogs eat fruit crops and are thus a bad omen. I don't know, they don't look too frightening to me. I mean, it's not like they're all that big or anything. The average flying frog is about 2 inches in length, though some species may double that size. The way these frogs go about catching their food is from where their namesake is derived. With special pads on the bottoms of their toes to help with landing, flying frogs may soar as far as 50 feet to traverse the trees. For scale, that would be like Chester being able to glide an entire home run in a baseball diamond with plenty of feet to spare. For more facts on flying frogs, check out the links in the description. Give a thumbs up if you learned something new today, and thank you for watching Animal Fact Files.